Good morning, class. Today we're going to learn about geometry. Does anybody know what geometry is, or does anybody want to take a guess about what it is? No? Okay, geometry is, well, the prefix of geometry means how things relate together in space. So the math dealing with angles, shapes, and relations is all kind of put together in that topic that we call geometry. To get into angles, um, they are measured in degrees. It's not the same kind of degrees that temperature is measured in, but we use the same symbol. Now, in your brain, I want you to think of a circle, and I want you to divide it into four even pieces. So if you want to think of a pie, that's fine. So if you take the first piece, it's 90 degrees, or a quarter turn. The second piece is another 90 degrees, which is 180 total, and another quarter turn, which equals a half turn total. And then if you add another quarter turn onto that, and another 90 degrees onto that, you get 270 degrees and three quarters of a turn. And then the whole entire thing is four pieces of 90 degrees, or four quarter turns, which is one full turn. Now how can angles be measured? They're measured with a protractor, and actually it's very simple. All you have to do is place the half moon shaped protractor with a straight edge over top of the angle and where the top line of the angle and the bottom line of the angle intersect is where you put the hole in the middle of the protractor and extend the line all the way through the top of the protractor so it hits a number and that number that you see in front of you is the measure of degrees of the angle. The most important thing though to remember while you are dealing with angles is that you can't forget to do the degree sign and many people often do forget that and that is something that you lose points over on a test or quiz because if you're just writing down a number on your piece of paper I don't know if you're talking about an angle measure or a centimeter or a millimeter or a mile so just make sure you always n note that it's in degrees. Now to classify angles they can be done in four different ways. There's the acute angle, the right angle, the obtuse angle, and the straight angle. The acute angle is 0 degrees to 90 degrees. A right angle is 90 degrees exactly, not 89.9, not 90.1. It's 90 degrees exactly every time. The obtuse angle is 90 degrees to 180 degrees, and a straight angle is 180 degrees exactly. So an acute angle example would be, um, <clears throat> if you think of a clothes hanger, how it comes together at the edges and the bottom and the top kind of intersect at the corner and form an angle that's less than 90 degrees. A right angle example would be where two walls come together in your house and it forms exactly a 90 degree angle. An obtuse angle would be if you think of a reclining chair or a rocking chair, how the back of the chair and the seat of the chair come together at an angle over 90 degrees. And a straight angle is something very simple to think about, and I'm sure you can think of hundreds of examples without even putting your thinking cap on, really. But a simple example would be the surface of your desk or the floor. So one thing that I want you to keep in mind that's a very big hint about 90 degree angles or right angles is that whenever you are encountered with one or whenever you're faced with one, this little square right here in the corner of whatever angle is a very big indicator that it's 90 degrees. If it's not 90 degrees exactly, there will not be that square in the corner. So that's definitely something you're going to want to write in your notes and keep in mind when you're doing homework and tests and anything really that has to do with angles. Now here's some examples. We can go over them as a class, but something that's very easy to determine whether the angle's obtuse, acute, right, or straight is if you see an angle and you're unsure, I'll show you right here with the mouse, that you just put the angle or extend this line straight up and make an imaginary line. And if it's bigger than the imaginary line like this, then it's obtuse. If it's smaller, then it's acute. So this one, for example, is obtuse. And now let's move down right here. You make this imaginary line, and it's less than that, so that means that it's an acute angle. Now for this one right here, we see this big hint right here that's a square in the corner, meaning a right angle, a 90 degree angle exactly. Now to this one, we don't see any indicators otherwise, and clearly that's a straight angle. The next one, we can make that imaginary line again right here, 
and very obviously that's smaller so that would be an acute angle and for this last one right here if we want to extend that line up it's obviously bigger and that would leave us with an obtuse angle now for this classifying um, angles worksheet let's pull that up really quick I want you to look at this as a class after I finish the lecture but I'll go over the instructions right now what I want you to do is use your protractor to write the angle deg the degree and be sure to put that degree sign in there and also I want you to classify it as being either acute, obtuse, right, or straight so I want you to look for those hints that I've already pointed out to you and then I'm sure it will be no problem at all for you now back to the slideshow we got going okay finding unknown angles you've already dealt with this a lot when you were taught how to set up an algebraic equation so what you're gonna do is look at the hints and it will be very simple you have this right here the square in the corner telling you that it's 90 degrees total 90 degrees so the entire angle is 90 degrees they give you this part which is 30 and then this part the X that you don't know the unknown you can just call it X and you want to find the left side so you set it up 30 degrees plus X plus equals 90 degrees and then when you subtract 30 from both sides you're left with X equaling 60 degrees and that's your answer for the next one now you want to ask yourself how big each side is before we get ahead of ourselves look at the hint what do we have right here a square in the corner that should send some light bulbs flashing off in people's heads you know where the square is it's 90 degrees and you know that a straight line is 180 degrees so that would mean that each side is 90 degrees really simple now for a more complicated one but still let's keep it simple in our head by breaking it up we have 180 degrees right here because we know it's a straight line so that's what it's all going to equal and then we have 30 we have 70 and we have X so let's move on and see how it's going to get set up we have 30 degrees plus 70 degrees plus X equals 180 degrees. Now we add 30 and 70 giving us 100 and then plus X equals 180 subtract 100 from both sides and you're left with X being 80 degrees. To check your solution here you just plug it back in. You all know how to do this but it's just the same thing with angles just add the degree sign so 30, 70, 80 they equal 180 which checks in the end so it's all set. Now back to this grid again, if anyone's a little lost or confused, I just want you to keep thinking back to the circle pi, if you will, cut up into four sections, each 90 degrees, each a quarter turn, so it's 90, 180, 270, 360 all the way around. Now we're going to move on to triangles. Interior angles of triangles are always equal to 180 degrees. So it's the same thing where you're going to be setting up an equation, but in the end, it's going to equal 180 degrees. Our first example here right now is this little square. That's our big indicator, remember. So we're given 90, 60, plus 30, and we set it equal to 180. And if it checks, then it's correct. So 30 plus 60 plus 90 does equal 180 degrees, which checks. So in the end, we know that that is correct. Now, some you tries. Let's set it up the same way. So I'll walk around while you try these on your own and then just check your answer as soon as you complete it. This first one here, we have 70 degrees plus 80 degrees plus X degrees equals 180 degrees. Add 70 and 80 giving you 150 plus X equals 180. That leaves you with X being 30 degrees. And then you can check that also. The next one, might look a little complicated but really if you break it down it's nice and simple you're given the 90 degree box in the corner right here and then two X's so you're gonna set it up the same way but it might look a little different because it's two X instead of one but it's 90 degrees plus X plus X equals 180 then you break it down so it's 90 plus 2X equals 180 2 X equals 90 divide, divide both sides by 2 which leaves you with X being 45 degrees now for quadrilaterals. I am going to test you on this example also as soon as I'm lecturing. The interior angles of a quadrilateral always equal 360 degrees. For example, 90 degrees plus 90 degrees plus 30 degrees plus X equals how many degrees? It's not 180. 
180th triangle. So this is what I want you to be careful of. I do not want this to happen to you on the test, so just be very careful. You set it up the same way, where 90 plus 90 plus 30 plus x equals 360, and then you solve for x. So now I want you all to work on that worksheet that I had shown you before. I'll pull it up on the screen one more time for you. Hmm, let's find it really quick here. This classifying examples worksheet that I've handed out to everyone. But that will be no problem, so you can go ahead and work on that, and I will walk around.